And we're live. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. Everybody, welcome Jackie Maddox. She is the founder of Women Electronics. It's unbelievable to have you. Um, as, and it's very empowering to have someone in this industry. You know, I, I've been in this industry my whole life, literally, because it's a family business. And now um, and I come from a very centric family and um and i love to see the diversity and there being a uh comp or a vision and a mission and a company into the industry for women electronics because there is a big diversity our company itself 80 percent of our staff in asia is women um and so that really resonates with me in the states it's it's kind of the opposite that's just the as we all know the industry electronics but it's to build the awareness what we can do and i'm really happy to have you on the show Thank you. I'm yeah. happy to be here. I'm really Thank happy you. to have the sh on the show and what we're, we're trying to do in the awareness. So, Jackie, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got electronics, and where Women Electronics came from? Okay, so it's kind of a long story, but I'll try to make it short. So I just kind of fell into the industry like a lot of people did. Um, didn't seek out a career in the electronic component industry, but happened to get a job rec at uh, the career center at my college. And um, I had been in broadcasting and radio, TV, film. I was working with the studios and- So you're natural at this. You're uh, no, natural. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. I'm not. It's oh, what yeah. I wanted to do. And this is kind of fun to be able to mm -hmm. do this because it kind of takes me back to some of my roots, which I originally wanted to start in. But anyway, I just fell into it got a job rec at, at the college and got hired by uh, a man named Leon Unger, who's one of the original radio pioneers, um, who knew at the time. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I just started calling on these distributors called GLDs, General Line Distributors. Mm -hmm. And at the time I was up in LA and these were like, you would go to uh, these stores and you could buy little parts for whatever audio equipment you were working on or Building whatever. Building any gadget, any widget. and you know. Whatever. There's a lot of video and audio guys mm -hmm. up in that area. So they had all these um, retail stores where you can go, go buy actual little components. So that's how I got to learn the parts was by stocking shelves and doing all reordering. You started from the basics. I oh, started from, from ground, ground zero. Level. Yeah. The yes. inventory side building up. That's fantastic. Yes. And so the company I ended up working for English technical sales bought Unger sales. And so I came over to that side and started getting into outside sales. At the time, I knew nothing. I really was not a technical person. Still, I'm not a technical person, but I had the capability to learn. And so I did. And the part of it I really enjoyed was interfacing with the customers. I would be excited about the end user products when we would actually design something in yeah. and uh, get them help and get them everything they needed. And then voila, there's this cool you know, end user product that would develop. And so I kind of got addicted to that. I liked uh, being an outside salesperson, learned the industry, met a lot of people. And then I fell into distribution because I really enjoyed the relationship aspect of distribution. Who knew at that time, all those contacts I would make would help us now in this effort for women in electronics. So the, the network, how you built your network, yeah. which you didn't even know you're building your network, but that's really fascinating uh, where that you started from, started from the ground, the parts as myself too. I can, that's really started as a family business and my father first thing, work in the warehouse, learn the parts, learn what you're mm -hmm. doing, learn what everything is. I think that's really how you build yourself to understand the product because it's not just a part number. Right. Yeah. And you learn how to put it into what goes into each gadget. And as yourself of being probably you were also a pioneer as the one, you know, very few women back then were the sales as, you know, a well-dressed professional woman comes in to sell. And you, I mean, and I can say if your mannerisms, you're very, you know, electric, you, 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 and everybody wants to talk to you. And if you know what you're talking about, you're very successful in persuading the sales. And just, yeah. Well, and I have to say, I was so fortunate because oh. I had so many great mentors who mentored me up. And, you know, I actually, my customers were my biggest advocate. So I would great. go to them and say, I need your help with this. And they'd help me and I get the business in the meantime. <laughs> so it, it, it worked out. I loved the relationships I built. And then after a while, I had a career in the industry and then decided to stay home with my kids for a long mm -hmm. period of time. My husband was traveling the world. And um, it really worked out for me. And during that time, interestingly enough, is I have a son who was having more learning issues at school. Okay. And so I was part of an effort behind a charter school that uh, got started here in Orange County and ended up being a school that could serve all children's needs um, and that they didn't feel special. And it ended up to be a very high performing school. But in that process of aligning with other women 
who had this mission to create a school for all children that everybody was equal that I fell in love with and seeing it could be successful that brought my confidence to start women in electronics when I came back into the industry that came from that is an amazing story and um, thank you for actually uh, building a platform and much gratitude for building a school and being involved with that because as a father myself the education of having you know doesn't as I said I'm talking about, I don't know if they're going to be the smartest kid in the class or they're not the, the more sharpest kid but having a platform they can excel or having a tool or a school that would, can help them assist them to be the best version of themselves um, is fantastic and I, I love how that embodied how the message of women in electronics and how this all put together and mm -hmm. um, that's amazing I, I mean I I, I didn't know that I, I hope people learn. Mm -hmm. some people probably do and something you know I hope people that's that is the inspiration behind it and it's right. um it's it's also very engaging that, and it so. comes down to confidence so I yeah. can say that's one of the things and we'll go into the story about mm -hmm. women electronics and what we're all about but really at the end of the day it comes down to confidence if you look at children in school it comes down to confidence if they perform well or not. And if you look at women in business, a lot of times we don't succeed is confidence. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that we don't have the capability, it's that we don't have the confidence. So part of our mission with Women in Electronics is to reach as many women as we can in the industry at all levels of their careers and all aspects of the mm -hmm. channel, by the way, um, to help build that confidence. Um, and what we're finding is it doesn't matter what level you are in your career. When you are the only woman in a boardroom of 20 men and you think differently and you know and you can sense the crowd and you know your idea is different, a lot of times what's missed when you don't have that female energy is, is that difference of opinion. It's that inclusion. It's that diversity. So a lot of times you can make a quick decision when you have like-minded people, but you don't know what you missed in that gap. So it's getting the women to understand it's incredibly important to speak up because what they're not saying can sometimes cost the company a lot but getting past those barriers sometimes can be really difficult so it's training i go i gotta agree i mean that's um as i i'd make it very simple i say the women are the color to the men's black and white and um and that's really i mean to put simplest analogy of form that's really what it is because there is there's many ways to look um and many different angles to look into a problem is a problem solutions but there's many solutions that sometimes when you have one diversity or just men in one room you don't see all the solutions out there you're kind of you're kind of closed off and i think the last 20 30 years of what's changed and the empowerment coming in the women's empowerment and it's um it's extravagant and it's it's fascinating and um, you can see all the leaders these days of women companies. You know, my mm -hmm. like my my um, my wife is a leader. She's a founder and CEO of a cosmetics company and she's a leader. But she had to go through that just yeah. like you said. She had a lot yeah. of challenges. She was she was in corporate banking, very you know all men. She was in corporate banking. And she had to go through that and her vision was cosmetics and she went to that field. But it, it she had to go through a lot. And now, as she, like yourself, she um, she speaks to women empowerment, how to make yourself professional. And but again, you hit the nail on the head when you're the only woman in the room with a, all men. And how do you stand out? How do you also, um, you know, sometimes you sense yourself not to say the wrong thing because you don't know you get pointed out because it doesn't matter what room you're in or where you're on. You could be all all women and with one man, the same thing. I get a little, uh, yeah. I'm not as confident. I'm like, oh, it's all, you know, I'm going in here. And it's, it's my wife at my, some of these events, I'm like, is it all women? I don't just want to be the yeah. only man in there. It's, but, you know, it's, it's a, I, I experience it too. And I know how it feels. So I can mm -hmm. imagine how it feels a woman in, in an all uh, men's conference or room like that. Well, and I think the important thing is for people to understand too is we want to align with the men. Mm -hmm. We don't want it to be like, oh, this is a woman's movement and we're just charging forward and, you know, we're just bullying our way ahead. That That's not who we are. Who we are is our acronym is W-E, we. We, we want to be we with the men. We, we want to be together. Yeah. So we believe that the magic is together. It's, it's not a part. So we thrive with that support from the men. And we know that the men sort of thrive with the support from the women. We typically, women are more detail orientated. We can um, think about a lot of different things uh, that the men sometimes don't see and vice versa. So the magic is us coming together, yes. right? And working together. So that is the whole premise of we, women in electronics, is not just women in electronics, it's ultimately we. The we. 
as 100%. an industry. Yes. I mean, that's one thing as you came from establish the goals of the empower, develop, advocate, and celebrate, right? Yes. That's a very powerful, you know, so every one of those is very powerful words. And I love that you said that as your mission statement. Um, how, and I know you have other uh, women on your board and yes. you guys came together. Is Did you have a, I think it was three or four of you that came together first with me? How did, how did it all develop? So here's how it started mm -hmm. is um, when I came back into the industry mm -hmm. and noticed that I was still one of the only women at the executive conferences and I was still one of the youngest ones, which kind of scared me because I was going, wait, where's all the youth? Mm -hmm. So I had this idea to pull some women together and only because I had done that, had that experience with the school, mm -hmm. it was 20 women. Yeah. And so that was my idea in my head, 20. So I wanted to pull 20 together from across the country. Some women I knew, some I didn't, but people who um, had a little influence in the industry, who had some uh, maturity in the industry, who knew people in the industry. And I just wanted to see what was the sense. It, was something like this a value? It, is this something we need? So most of the people who came, I didn't know. It's just kind of word of mouth, meeting somebody through somebody, uh, making sure they were credible. And then 20 women showed up. And I'll tell you, it was in Laguna Beach in 2017. I actually couldn't believe it. It would be like, you know, they all showed up for my birthday party. It was like, I, I couldn't believe they came because they traveled from the East Coast. Wow. They traveled from all over and they really had no idea what to expect. And at the, they had no idea who I was. So I was actually shocked they came. And so it showed me, hmm, maybe there is a need because they're coming, number one. So then we had a program of a day and a half and it was amazing. We had speakers uh, lined up that were there to set the tone of what this organization could be about. It was about... Um, our fear in the boardroom. It was about overcoming obstacles. It was about uniting with the men and how to do that. It was about a lot of personal and professional development. So in that time, it was kind of magical, I have to say. And after that um, day and a half, we all agreed together as a group uh, that we would start Women in Electronics. And the three, the, the two other people actually that are on the executive team with me are Monica Heifel from Kemet mm -hmm. and Amy Keller. She's now with Abercon. And I just have to say, I don't know. Um, it wasn't me who selected them. It was like a divine intervention thing. I didn't know Monica so well. I just knew she was the one. I didn't, at the time, I had seen Amy speak at an EDS event, and I just knew she was the one too. And the, the three of us together have been like a magic secret sauce. And so how it operates is we have our executive team, and then we have our board who helps to implement all of our goals and objectives. That's fantastic. I mean, that is an amazing story. It's very empowering. As you said, you put a event together. You didn't think anybody was going to show up. You had a, a kind of full house, very empowering for you. It's That's where it lit. That's what Launchpad was. It mm -hmm. lit it. And then the universe brought you three ladies together. Yes. And now, I mean, look, look, three years now it's gone. Yeah, three, it started in 2017. So yes. three years later, you know, now, um, and you have a name in the industry. I mean, as I said, I was at the ERA conference and, and, and that was the first time I, but didn't, when I started researching, Women Electronics, it looks like you've been around for many years, but it's, I mean, it is a short time, but time goes so fast, right. but uh, there is an awareness out there. And that's the biggest thing that I want to build up more because there's thousands of thousands of people in electronics from the manufacturing side to distribution representatives that everybody needs, there's an awareness and that there's an empowerment and there is a, a place that if, as I said, it's the diversity side, ask yes. questions, a place you can ask questions and empower and make them, as I always said, the quest to make the better version of yourself, the mama mentality that we're for Kobe Bryant, but that is a quest to make a better version of yourself. Mm -hmm. And every woman as a man needs a platform or as I say, kind of the life coach, Yes. I really believe in life coach. I have a life coach. Mm -hmm. I have a business coach myself that I think in the last couple of years has really changed my vision, my direction, um, because sometimes you get lost in your head. Right. You know, and as you say, for the women said, having a place to go, um, yeah. a vision as yourself, as being a great leader in this, I think that really shows the, um, the empowerment that you've done and how we, everybody together, men and women, which I love that, is bring it together and how we can make... Um, make the awareness in the, in the electronics field and um, into the industry. Right. And so really having said that, we do have um, some main objectives and mm -hmm. we do get some coaching, by the way. I'm so blessed and happy to say that we have a great advisory council who are people outside of our organization, mm -hmm. men and women who make up our advisory council. Uh, so we have Michael Knight on there, Phil Gallagher, um, Kimberly Appleton from OnSemi. We have uh, Linda Johnson from DigiKey. 
Um, we have a couple out of industry people as well on there to kind of keep us in check. Yeah. We have um, Lenon Clark from Merrill Lynch and a gal named Taya Page from um, ITA Group. It's like a marketing okay. um, event yeah. company. We have Alan Bird on our um, mm -hmm. our council. So and, and now Lynn Terrell as well. So we have an amazing out of organization council that we meet with quarterly. And they are there to kind of be our eyes and ears in the industry and to tell us, okay, yes, you're doing great over here and maybe consider some things over here. I feel like we get really good mentorship. Right. That's and that is such a critical part of our program as well. So if you look at our four main goals, um, we'll start with celebrate. Um, that is one of the most critical parts of our program is women celebrating other women. So what happens when you have a male dominated industry is women start to compete and they don't always support each other. And so women can be other women's biggest block. And um, that is really still honestly one of our biggest stumbling blocks. I think there's a little misconception about women in electronics. Um, most of the men seem to be pretty well on board. And especially once they talk to us and they find out more information, they seem motivated by it and they seem inspired and they seem really on board. Not all the women because they don't want to seem, um, and, and this is a smaller percentage, but the, the rule of the game is it's the small percentage that affects the mass. The mass. So uh, it's that small percentage we still have of women that really um, are competitive and block women and maybe don't want to feel like they're aligning with women because that puts them against the men. That's a misconception. We're we. We want to be um, together with the men as well. So we don't want to be seen as an organization is that if you're aligned with us, you're against men. It's actually quite the opposite. And I get criticized sometimes of being promoting men so much, but I'm going to be genuine and honest to who I am. So I love people. I love men and women. I My father was my first mentor who's was the best mentor anybody could have. I've had amazing male leaders in my life. Um, so I had a great career in the industry and still do and have been supported by amazing men that if I wasn't, I wouldn't be here right now. So I want to celebrate them. And I want to celebrate the women also who deserve to have that career as well. I mean, I, I can think that is the right when you start from the beginning from the education of women and being competitive, women being competitive with each other. It mm -hmm. is but also comes to education of oneself yes. to understand um, our fault. Cause we are, there could be very, there's some very driven women, some very driven men. But the number one thing I think is sometimes they're overconfident of themselves and they don't want people in. And sometimes their weaknesses, they turn into an, I would say sometimes it's negativity that they don't want to understand their own weaknesses that they have. They might mm -hmm. be good at one thing or something. And then they have other weaknesses. People like poking at them. They yes. think people are poking at them. So that's number one thing, even for our team is we're one IBS. Everybody's a family we work together mm -hmm. globally, but we still have those challenges is how do we educate the staff? How do we go to the education process to know oneself, mm -hmm. to know um, the weak, the pauses of weaknesses. And we do actually give some types of um, for the management as well, give some types of analytical exams for people to learn about themselves, you know, and that's mm -hmm. one thing. I think that uh, that really resonates with what you're trying to do is educate the women. And as you say, sometimes the women are the most competitive than the men. Men are competitive. I, but... I'm, I'm actually surprised as I'm going along yeah. to learn more and more. But really, it's about personal and professional development. Yeah. Because if you don't know your own biases, and we all have them, and it's not wrong, it's just a way we categorize information in our lives. Mm -hmm. We just have to catch ourselves and know when we're being biased know ourselves enough to be self-aware. That's all it is. So it's the personal development and, and um, all your unconscious bias, all your emotional intelligence. Everybody has their weak spots, right? All of us do. We're human beings. So it's a matter of learning those weak spots so you can pull that into the professional world. When you're managing teams and you have conflict, you have things that arise, how do you pull that together? Well, if you're not a developed person personally, it's not going to go very well. So we like mm -hmm. to focus on both personal and professional development. Traditionally in our industry, it's been all professional, but we're finding as we're going along, especially this day and age, you really have to have all yourself in check in order to be the right leader. And the female traits that come to the party, the traditional female traits, um, empathy, compassion are in 
prior times might have been considered more weak traits and now moving forward are really strong, critical, and essential traits to have in a leader is to have that empathy and be able to lead with compassion and uh, still be a strong leader. So I think that we as an industry, it was a whole men and women can learn these things, right? And learn together. There will be a time we have some type of programming where we want to pull in the men because so many like Michael Knight, so many men are saying, wait a minute, we want to hear this too. We want to learn too. So we will put that together right now. We're focusing on the women and we're always going to be an organization that really does support women and gives them a really soft place to fall. Yeah. And the industry to help retain them. I loved how you put that. It's a very simple analogy. It's like there's the, you're, there's the one self as the you know the personal, and there's a professional, right? Someone might be very professional in things, but the personal self isn't developed because as in, in, in schools these days, you know, in schools everything's team based. Yep. So people don't have the, such team. they are uh, there's no I in team, but they are the I, and uh, that is the challenge. Even though they might be successful in something, but they're not. And as management's more horizontal these days, it's not as vertical. Everything's more and more horizontal. A lot of communication. Everything's out there. You know, there's much more empowerment. Affirmation is there. Everybody, um, but that is really changing the workspace. And just with your message that you put there is understanding. Yes. Each other, understanding oneself, mm-hmm. and um, and not criticizing each other, but understand. Hey, there's something we, we all need to work on. Something. We are not. No one's perfect. Just like you said, no one's perfect. I'm not perfect. Every day, I learn something new. But I put an effort into it. And that's what we want to say is the status quo of, yes, I've done this. If you stay status quo, you're going to get left behind, especially in today's age, the digitalization, revolution. And I love that you're also embracing that and bringing it right. to the forefront. So that that's fantastic. You know, now going into the, as you say, you got to celebrate, you got to advocate, to develop and empower. Mm-hmm. So going back to the advocate, yeah. that is a critical part of our um, program. And so we're so proud of this mentorship program we put together because it's an industry-wide program. So when we first started it, we um, wanted to put something together that could be modeled after Mm -hmm. another program that worked really well. We went out across all industries. We met with consultants. We could not find an industry-wide mentorship program. And we thought, oh, that's interesting. Well, let's put it together. So we did. So we took the best of the best. Um, I had been through a couple mentorship programs. We had some team members that had Monica Heifel from Kemet. She's been amazing. She's been really the champion behind this program. So we sat down and put this mentorship program together and it is managed uh, so incredibly professional and well. I'm so proud of that effort. Right now we're in the pilot. And so we connected people that didn't know each other in the industry who now have relationships and what we're finding is that women typically don't get mentored up as me- as much as men do. And the reason why is our unconscious biases, because wouldn't you rather spend time with somebody who's like like-minded, you? Like-minded, more like-minded. The, the, as easier. you say, the bro relationship. The, the, yes. These days it's like, you know, I know, you know, I understand. And there's yes. nothing yes. wrong with it. There's nothing bad with it. But guys, you know, let's go have a beer. Let's, let's go play beer. golf. Yeah. Let's whatever. So that's why women in electronics is so mm-hmm. critical and important because we're not going to have that beer. We're not going to the golf course with the guys. You know, we're not doing that. We're not going on the fishing trip. So we needed to have a space for women to call home so we could retain them and they feel safe and secure and like they have a place in the industry. So that's a critical component. But the mentorship program, connecting people in the industry is is one of the best things we could be doing for the industry. And actually we're gonna start pulling in men. We're gonna pull in as many male mentors as we can because we want our women to have access to men and women mentors in the industry. So very excited, the, the pilot has gone amazingly well. We have a, a 97% success rate with it so far. It's so um, exciting. So in September is gonna launch our next wave of, of mentorship program. So anybody listening, if they wanted to, they could go on our website, womeninelectronics.com, go to our mentorship section, and they can fill out an application to be a mentor or a mentee. And by the way, we really want to change the way that we're doing mentorship. So it's not only the person who's more mature and experienced, it's also, I want to learn from somebody who's younger, who knows how to do the social media, who knows how to do everything that I kind of missed those years. So we're looking into a reverse mentorship uh, program as well. 
So this can benefit everybody. So well, it's it, well rounded. As that saying, you want to round yes. it up. Don't just go from yeah, yes. very experienced senior leaders. Yeah. You want to well round it because there are um, yes, the millennials. The you know we got the the X. Uh, I'm an X. You know for that point, it, there are different um, avenues, and everybody's got these special days because there's so much information out there. Some people excel much on the social media aspect, digital media. How is it going? Everybody puts themselves out there in front of a video camera. Everything has changed, and mm -hmm. we have to. Um, and how you're in those mentorship programs, I love it that you're turning a full 360. It's mm -hmm. not as in, it was one side. I think a lot of mentors in the past were kind of one sided, just having right. leaders that have excelled or CEOs, or right. and now you're like, okay, let's do a 360. And I think that's fantastic. I, I love that idea. I, I mean, I am, um, I'm hundred percent behind it. Yeah. So if you're a, um, seasoned professional and you're not, Michael Knight was just on our, we radio. Mm -hmm. Um, we have that podcast yes. too, by the way, yes. women in electronics, uh, you could download that on your, wherever you get your podcast. And so you have it. Yeah. You have it on spot. So it's on Spotify, iTunes, uh, iTunes um, tune it's in, tune in, uh, Buzzfeed. I think you have, it, you have it on Buzz. Buzzsprout. Buzzsprout. Is where it Buzz, comes. Sorry. But yeah. That's that, that's who hosts it, but it's, um, all the, wherever you get your podcast, you can basically download it. So, okay. and do you also have a YouTube? Uh, yes, we do. Okay. We do have a YouTube as well. Yeah. So, um, but our website has everything, okay. all of our Good. podcasts, everything's on there. Um, but we had Michael Knight on the show and actually right now we're in a four part series and this has actually been such a fun project to interview Don Acri and then now Michael Knight. And we've had a lot of leaders, you know, Phil Gallagher, a lot of leaders in our industry, um, on our program. It's been super fun, but Michael said something that really struck me is he said, you have to stay curious. And he talked about that a lot. And if you look on social media and you see all the content and the very credible content he puts out, there's something to that that we all have to learn from, you know, is that what happens when you stay curious? So just because you're seasoned in your career doesn't mean you can't learn again, doesn't mean you can't do things different. So we also need to be learning. So if you're a mentor, maybe take the next session to be a mentee. And vice versa. So that's I, I, you hit the nail on the head. I just had a podcast with my father last week. He's the same thing. He's very uh, information and knowledge equals uh, success or revenue, money. You know, right. as he said, and it's being curious. It's also continuously learning, learning. every day. And now today, yes. from our handhelds, everything is from a handheld. Yeah. We can pick up our handheld and get that data instantly. Yes. So there's no more. I mean, books are there, but now books are audibles, it's digital, right in your in your car. You can listen to these. And I, I, I how much with Michael Knight? He is every day. He puts out some interesting content. Yes. Yeah. And that that is because um, you know, as I said, he he sometimes be fascinating. He articulates it, and as I told him, he's. It takes like something very complicated, makes a very simple yes. format and shares it, mm -hmm. which that's as a leader. That's what that's we important. do as yourself, as a leader in women electronics is you can also, you do that yourself. You take a lot of complicated, you know, um, complicated subjects, mm -hmm. things are sensitive subjects and, um, and simple, you know, articulate them for simple so everybody understands because not everybody, um, everybody has a different learning patterns, right? right? Learning patterns and how we encode, decode information mm -hmm. is different for all. And for men and women, it's different. You know, I decode information completely different than yourself. So everything comes in and the words, the vernaculars and these, um, it, it makes a big sense. That's why I think audio or video these days is very powerful because it kind of simplifies it. And right. sometimes someone reads a script or a paragraph, we, we, we interpret it two different ways. Right. And that's why we can explain having a back and forth and explain to each other. It's, it's very powerful. I, I, and I love how you simplify that and bring that into the women electronics uh, mission. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and really as women, when one rises, we all rise, but as women rise, men rise too, mm -hmm. and vice versa. And that's just how it's got to go in the industry moving forward is this, we have to rise together, right? And so part of helping to make that happen is our develop. That's one of our other goals is our leadership development program. And that is personal and professional, like I said. So once a month, we have a professional trainer. Once a month, we have um, somebody from, you know, a health and wellness mm -hmm. or something, some other aspect of your life. It could be, you know, dressing professionally. It could be whatever. Um, but we need to pull both together. Um, so we're really proud of that program because I feel like we have great trainers. We're also putting together an industry-wide um uh, leadership training that it, it touches on the diversity and inclusion. Um, it gives companies a good base of what they should be looking at. So we are in the process of creating that as well, that will go out and bring this package, you know, to the industry. So if they are not currently doing that, they'll have access to something 
And I love how you put the health and wellness into there because I think that's a very, um, a very critical point of success or of the work life these days. Work life balance. I think everything. I don't yes. think their work life balance, but also having the health and wellness of, yeah. and it brings the um, the stress levels down, the mental stability, and I, sometimes they look good. You feel the part. You you know feel good, but it is to really education having also a platform so people because our company itself does some health and wellness for some of the our offices, and we try to give a program or or wellness or have a competition. Um, but not everybody likes to participate as you right. know, it's different, but as if you can also be, have that type of platform, bring a speaker, bring a, a speaker from the health mm -hmm. and wellness dieting, or just how to stress level, how to bring stresses down or how yes. these type of things that again, it's information and knowledge and you have to spread the message. And it's, in my opinion, it's, it's, it's repetition. You have to be repetitive because a lot of people don't take it in. It's so true. And it's awareness and it's self-awareness. Yeah. So what we're finding is that not all companies give this type of training. So that's why, especially for women, it's really important because um, we're trying to reach, say, that inside salesperson or product manager, somebody who's not invited to a lot of these leadership development trainings and doesn't have access to that. So we feel that our program is incredibly um, very, it's such a good value for the money that you pay. Um, and if you're investing in your career, it's just really one of the best things you can do to get your feet wet. Um, and then from there, it just opens the door to a lot of other opportunities. So we're encouraging all women from all aspects of the channel to come into the Women in Electronics organization. Right now, it's interesting when I look at the membership, we have a lot of manufacturers, we have distributors, mm -hmm. we have reps. Um, we don't have hardly any end users which I want to change. So we're going to be doing some marketing campaigns to try to bring in our end users. That's surprising. That's surprising. I mean, maybe I could think maybe because your network was that, but I think the end user is very, that's a big market. It's fascinating yeah. because it showed us, this is what it showed us is that our channel, we keep wanting to reach our end user, our customer, but we are not connected to our customer mm -hmm. and we are separated because we are not a diverse sales channel but our customers are a typically of diversity. So we have to bridge this gap, right? And so that is part of it, but also our customer base doesn't see us, they don't see themselves as being part of the electronic component industry. They see themselves, say, if you have a medical account, they'll say, oh, I'm in the medical industry. So what we're trying to do is come up with some marketing campaigns mm -hmm. where we're going to start with medical and we're going to reach those women who work for these medical companies and try to pull them in. Another thing, we don't have a lot of engineers. We're, we're dying to get more engineers into our organization. And the beauty of that is we have a national chapter program. Right now, I think we have about 15 or 16 chapters and growing, but we would love to have forums. Yep. You know, we would love to have opportunities for women in all aspects of the channel to talk, to hear from the end user, to hear from the engineers, to hear from the salespeople, to connect people and have these forum discussions, you know, be so fun. Um, so we're trying to build it up. So we encourage anybody listening, reach out to your colleagues, reach out to your end users, your design engineer friends, pull them in and just all, all aspects of the channel. I think that's extremely fascinating. And the dyna how dynamic women electronics is. You're, I mean, that is, you're pivoting, you're dynamic, embracing the change, but as well as, you know, you, sometimes you think you have your messages out there and you say you're having challenge with the end user, but you think, hey, why wouldn't they be a part of it? But mm -hmm. again, it's the knowledge education yep. of saying there, everybody's welcome because in electronics, I mean, I, it's great. The medical field is very important in the yes. day and age this year, especially this year, but you know, all the other sectors, the tech sectors, we are in the business of hardware. Yes. Every piece, get every any type of get electronic has a piece of hardware from a semiconductor, electromechanical, connector, whatever yep. it goes into. And these build the system that the software goes into. Yes. And right now, right. the software is a sexy part, but how do we bring the sexiness back to the hardware where yes. the women in electronics, I think, is that is some of the message is the bringing the, you know, the beauty and the sexy back into this industry. Yes. And the awareness of it. We're pretty passionate about that. That's one of my hot spots, to tell mm. you the truth, because number one, I love the industry, um, love the people, love the way it operates. And I just think we're the best hidden secret, unfortunately. Um, but Michael Knight and I have talked about this, a lot of industry leaders. Michael talks at UT. He's trying to get recruitment in that area. So that kind of inspired me to start talking to some colleges around mm. our area. And what we're trying to develop is 
actually part of our national chapter program is to have our chapters start aligning with their different colleges to try to pull in the youth more. So there's it's a massive effort, but we're going through it very strategically. In fact, I just um, had some great discussions with UCI about a, a potential partnership there too. So we're doing our part. It's very exciting. We got to get out there, start talking to the colleges, let them know there is a um, opportunity in our industry and a great opportunity over the next five to 10 years, because we're going to have 70% leadership turnover. That is huge in an industry. So anybody graduating right now, this is the best moment in time. They could not be getting into an industry at a better time when the industry as a whole is trying to make changes. The industry is trying to accept inclusion and diversity. The industry is open to changes and we're at the same time moving forward. So um, a lot of our leaders are going to be retiring. We need new leaders coming up. It's going to be a fast forward for a lot of these young people coming in. Um, so it would behoove them to get into our industry. That right there is the aha moment that the career is endless. This, I mean, right there, it's sky's the limit. Yes. Careers are available. This is a very dynamic um, industry. Um, very, you know, forward moving, you know, and as electronics are moving faster, moving forward and forward, um, in the next five years, the electronic spend will double to triple. Yes. And this is the exciting field that you want to be in because this is, well, the monetary comes with that. The more yes. money you spent, the more people R and D, the more, and, um, and embodying the awareness of, of women electronics, bringing that that's, it's fantastic. Yeah. And I love, I love that. I love your enthusiasm behind it. Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, thank it's you. so fascinating listening to you. And that's one thing I, I love. Um, I love it. You're, you're a thought leader for the women. You're a thought leader in the electronics industry. You've had the experience. It's giving you, as I said, you're trying to give back now and trying to build. The well, that's our yeah. tagline, by the yeah. way. Thought leadership powered by women. There that's it our is. That's tagline See, for there women it is. in electronics. <laughs> 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 you just named uh. it so yeah, get you know, moving beyond that, our, our final goal is empower. And that's just mm -hmm. what we're talking about right now is all of our opportunities to have different events. Our one of our big events is our women electronics conference, which, you know, not just because I put it together, I just have to say it, it is really one of the best conferences you could go to. And and the reason is the content is so relevant and so good. And basically it's it's almost life-changing. So you come to a women electronics conference. And it never leaves you. You know, you leave home, but it doesn't quite leave you because there's so many aha mm -hmm. moments. There's so many things that women learn about themselves, mm -hmm. about other people. Um, and it's just, this is a leadership journey. It's not a one and done. So we have to continually keep trying and trying to better ourselves. But the beauty is you have this uh, group of women who come together and you have breakout sessions and we're rolling up our sleeves and we're talking about the industry and we're, we're, we're digging down with ourselves and, and we're really motivated to strive higher and do more. And um, to see people come together that have never met in the industry for years being in the industry. Like-minded. So it's like, like yeah. It's amazing. And to see these friendships forming is absolutely unbelievable. So we're starting things like... Uh, uh, wine with we we have one coming up uh, Wednesday tomorrow night I think it is um, at four Pacific time so we have all these different events walking with we have all these different things we really including our chapters uh, we really want to bring the women together and and get them to feel comfortable we're finding in our industry retention is a big issue as well so you might get youth you might get women in but it's it's about a two-year time span and they're gone so we're hoping that the more people connect, we will keep them in the industry. Well, I think with right now, the pivot to digital, um, everything's being digital. And I think mm -hmm. we're going to be in this for about six months to a year to two years. Yes. We don't know how long we'll be in the in the vice place of not having be able to, because as a sales rep or in the sales field, you have mm -hmm. to visit customers, you have to confront engineers. And now right. that everything's virtual, digital, but a lot more people are spending more and more screen time. Everything's right. on the screen. So um, now as yourself, you're embracing the change and being digital, going to the, doing these vodcasts and uh, getting the awareness out there and also building in the content yes. content it will bring the awareness and targeting it yes. to your audience that you want to do will really um educate them to bring it, hey come together mm -hmm. um because it's hard we can't all meet up and right now you know we don't know how you can have right. your next actual conference together is being virtual yes. um but also keeping the retention of that virtualness is how long can you keep someone engaged on a screen and that's the thing i have with our our my experiences even from our teams are having uh meetings or webinars internally or externally I can people engage the whole time. 
How can you? Because when you're at a conference, you can get up, you go to the restroom, you have a drink, you you know, you kind of kind of zone out, mm-hmm. get on your phone. I mean, this happens. But yes. when you're in front of a computer the whole time, sometimes you're like, okay, I'm done yes. now. And it's maybe the subject you're not you're not uh, it's maybe a subject you're like you're not really tuned into or the speak or something. It happens. We all are like that. We're not engaged. Mm-hmm. As I said, I say out of a conference, we probably only take about thirty to forty percent of what we heard back home right. with us because we can't encode and take it in. We just can't memorize it. It has to be repetitive for us. Yes. To um, so, but overall, but I think that the way you're going around it, the way you're trying to target it, and at this time, right? Being a leader, as you're saying, thought leader, women electronics, I think this is the perfect time to the launch pad for you to excel mm-hmm. into the awareness of the program. And as of myself, whatever we can do, as this is our my, my business, this is my business, my blood is in electronics industry, distribution, supply chain, I'll get the awareness out to everybody because we all win together. Mm-hmm. We, we mm-hmm. all win together. We're all in this. It's not like we just came in this, like Kim started this business right. last year. And it's very hard to start a business from zero today in this industry. Everybody's right. got, and um, and you hit some of those points of successions happening. Everybody's going to come in and there is positions as as development happens because electronics is getting more and more R&D happens. And, um, and I love how you did with UCI. That's oh. fantastic. I love how you're going to tag along with them. That's good. I hope that's a success. For I, I hope so too. And you know, not just them, but other colleges too. Yeah. So we're going to do a pilot and hopefully that gets going and we'll do it with all around the country. It, 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 all it has to do is have somebody to put the thought and the momentum behind it and it can happen. So we're going to be the ones to spark it. We're actually going to be collaborating with the industry as well, with ERA and ECIA. They've been very supportive of our program. So we're all going to come together in a collaborative effort to, you know, make sure we're all on board with doing something collaboratively for the industry. So this is actually really exciting. And I think it can make a difference um, moving forward for years to come. Because also the the point I want to make is the people that are going to be retiring, that are here now, we can't replace them. If you think of where they started, where the industry has changed, what they know, that knowledge, I mean, it's irreplaceable. You, we need to get those people involved. As many you know, leaders we have, male, female, we need them all coming into our program to start mentoring um, as much as possible because it's a little scary to think mm-hmm. of a lot of these leaders leaving with all the breadth of knowledge they have and I think we take it for granted sometimes, but it's it's really valuable. It's invaluable. Well, it's invaluable. And as of last week, um, having a broadcast with my father and all the information that we learned and all the background and what he'd learned. And I can say, if you just take that by a hundred thousand, yes. all the other people similar oh. to that. Um, and at this point, it's trying to make people comfortable. And if we can't get them, get them at least in a video, get interviewed them. That's my goal is too, is to bring a lot of these leaders, a lot of these business yeah. owners who started companies 20, 30, 40 years ago, especially the family business and that, bring on those people to give their leadership advice of what they've gone through challenges, at least. Yes. Because if we can't educate or if they can't bring on new people, at least spread the message yes. of what we're doing and what we're doing moving forward. And that was my goal. I mean, that's what I've been trying to connect. I've been using the platforms, digital online to connect to a lot of people and say, hey, I would like to have you on. I love about your company and research about it. I mean, mm-hmm. it's like prospecting sales, but, but I'm prospecting someone to bring on for interviews. Right. And then for yourself, I think that's what you're trying to connect as well as connecting with everybody, which a thought came to my mind is also is uh, like the schools is like MIT, like these yes. technical institutes for sure. because there is diversity, there is women too as engineers mm-hmm. and to bring all those on as well as, yes. as, well as the men, there, there are men there, but it's, um, as I said, back when I was in school, it was like, oh, that person's engineers, they're nerdy or this and that. And, you know, I was a little nerdy too when I was in school. Yeah. I was into building, ro- racing cars and building things. And that's how <laughs> I was, I was, you know, but everything changed, but that yeah. information to that, that, um, and that skill set, it really, it, uh, went to my career to understand yes. yep. and to make analytical decisions, to make uh, solve problems, solve solutions, and also mm-hmm. wanted to learn. Yes. Right. So one of the interesting things is going back to the college effort, yeah. um, we created a membership for college students. Mm-hmm. And so it's $75 for a year. So they get oh, to wow. participate in all of our programs, come in, get mentored, be mentored. Um, the whole the whole program, we would love to have them in, get them in the SPARK program, and hopefully keep them in our industry after graduation. So that would be the goal. So we're going to really align with our sponsorship companies to try to get them pulled in more and and have a lot of um, eligible applicants when they graduate. So we're excited. Well, so we heard, heard it here. So for all college students and uh, tech, especially technical and engineer, you, you get a one-year membership for $75? $75, yes. Oh, wow. And you can be part of association. 
all the leadership, yes. all the tools, yes. everything out there, um, and learn from uh, thought leaders like yourselves and yes. other people in the industry that can give them also a pathway of career, which way to choose, which way to go, if they're going to go to manufacturing or distribution or these these sides. So I think that's great. I mean, that's that's free. I mean, I mean yes. these subscriptions these days are so, so expensive. So yes. I mean, I mean, it's so I mean, inexpensive, and it's it's amazing what you can do and what you're doing for the the new youth out there. Right. So we just encourage to, you know, wrap things up as many companies in our industry, as many, we're trying to reach semi companies with, as well. We have IP and E, but we don't yeah. have the semi side. We, we need sponsors. We need, yeah. you know, people to get behind us because this is a massive effort. And one of the things I didn't mention is we're going global. So in fourth quarter, we should be doing a pilot uh, program in Europe. And then beyond that, 2021, we want to launch globally. So we really need the support of the industry. It's a massive effort. Um, we need a lot of support. We're going to try to be building our membership. In the meantime, we need industry support. So any companies that want to well, get behind us. I'll, we're 100% behind you. Um, I have some <laughs> members that think so. We can talk offline about that, but I would love to be involved, especially in Southeast Asia. We're very we're very big. And as I said, we have a diversity, 80% women mostly there. Mm -hmm. And they're all leaders, engineers as well. Right. And uh, they would love to be part of this type of program. And yeah. we can also hopefully be a launch pad for uh, we yeah. women electronics in yeah. Asia as well. So yeah. I'm, you know, it's, it's fascinating what we can do and the technology and how you can expand awareness. So and when we come yeah. together, really, we're here. better together. That was the theme of one of our conferences. Uh, one of the first conferences is better but, together. Yeah. And it, it was the women coming together and being better together and celebrating each other. And the bummer is this last conference and uh, for 2020 that we were now postponing till uh, November and having a satellite mm -hmm. model. But our our theme for that was even better together because we were having some of the guys come and this, all of us better together. So we will reconvene with that uh, yeah. in 2021. But Oh, that's fascinating. That's fascinating. Well, thank you. As I said, thank you, Jackie. This has been extremely informative, okay. extremely fascinating. And what we want to do, and I'll, as I said, I'd love to, I I would love to work with uh, Women Electronics to Very bring nice. the awareness. We love to bring awareness, bring it out there. We're 100% behind this because for me, is this is the industry that we need to bring in new talent bring in the education and that's a, it's a winning industry. Yes. So don't think it's all the sexiness of this. It's not so, but we're going to take it to the next level. Yes. And it's uh, an industry yeah. with a heart. And so that's what hasn't been yes. uh, communicated enough. But if you look at the men and the women in the industry, especially the people who have called their career home in the electronic component industry, it is an industry with a real heart. And so if that is what I can communicate, and get more people in. And if they can have the kinds of relationships I've had and developed over the years, um, that would just be amazing. That's, you nailed it. That was it. That was it. It's a heart. We have a home and uh, we're here for every, yeah. the electronic industry is welcoming everybody, all ages, diversity through it. So it doesn't matter what it is. We're welcoming it because we need other leaders, other future leaders in our industry um, and other people who can take this business and um, this, you know, distribute, this level this to another level yes you know, and yes. bring the awareness and be the, the bring the sexiness like the Google's and Microsoft's and Apple's out there because we in my opinion we should be we yeah. are we are this microphone has components that yes. the distributor designed into it yes. this is what it is so don't think it's just this you know so this is what it is but yeah. once again thank you Jackie for your time I, you. I I I love this and I will we will soon do another one soon okay yeah all, all right. right thank Thanks you for so having much. me thank you